Today we're going to be talking about my first impression of the Sony A7S III, coming up. First, let's go do a little rewind to the unboxing. Okay, so the moment I've really been excited for, my Sony A7S III has arrived. So I'm gonna give you a breakdown of my first impressions, starting with an unboxing. I ordered this back in September, and it finally got here today. And I am excited to open this up, test it out, uh, give it a real world test, and let you guys know what I think. So why don't we open this up? I'm not gonna be the most great, graceful unboxer, so just don't expect stunning results here. It looks so beautiful. Uh, what else we got in here? Receipt and, ah uh, yes, a CFAST card. I do upgrade in order to take advantage of the camera's best settings. All right, let's see what we got here. We got manuals and stuff I will probably not read. <laughs> All right, what is this? I'm not even sure. Oh, this is to protect the um, the cables. That's pretty nice. Got a um, USB-C, it looks like. So that's cool. All right. A camera strap. I never use this, but looks nice. And here we go, the body. Ooh, it's a hefty guy. Oh yeah. It's a lot bigger. I'm coming from a Sony A6500. So this is, feels a lot heftier, a lot bigger than what I'm used to holding. That's what she said. Um, and I believe it's even, it's bigger than the Sony a7 III, the predecessor to it. And uh, the long awaited flip out screen. That's a feature us filmmakers have been wanting in a Sony camera for a while. All right, what else have we got in here? All right, we got, looks like a charger for the battery. Perfect. And we got another cable for the charger. I don't know if this is supposed to come out or not. There we go. Again, not the most graceful, I apologize. All right, here's the battery. I knew that had to be in there. So we got our camera body, charger, battery, cables, protector for the cables. Um, just put that there. Camera strap. And let's bring out that knife again. Boom. Butter. Not butter. <laughs> oh, I'm really bad. I don't do very many unboxings. All right. This little sucker here is an expensive tiny thing. Way too expensive. <laughs> but yeah, in order to really unlock everything from this camera and something I did not, oh my, it's so. That's different. I'm used to SD cards. This is a CFast card, a tiny, tiny CFast card. Crazy. Um, and I'm gonna have to get a reader, otherwise I won't be able to get anything off this camera, which that would not be ideal. All right, so this is 
this is everything here. But yeah, so I'm gonna be shooting a wedding this weekend and giving it a real world test. See uh, how it stands up. I gotta get a, acquainted with the new menu systems because they overhauled everything, um, which I'm excited about. It's supposed to be a lot cleaner, a lot simpler. Sony systems have always been overcomplicated. It was the first menu system I got into, so it worked for me because I didn't have anything to compare it to really, and I got used to it, so now I gotta reacclimate to something different. Yeah, so I'm gonna get this thing set up and uh, start getting some test shots and getting used to it, and take it out for that real world test, and then I will be back here to tell you what I think. Okay, we're back. I had the opportunity to shoot a wedding with this new camera and really get it tested out in the work uh, in the real world and uh, see how it performs. So this is not gonna be a technical review. I'm not going over a bunch of specs or anything like that, but just as an overall usability of the camera um, as a wedding filmmaker and my first impressions and what I thought. Now, keep in mind, I'm coming from the A6500. So this is a huge leap up for me. So take my review with that in mind. First thing I noticed was it's like much heavier than my tiny little other Sony's, which I don't have next to me. And I'm actually recording this whole thing on, um, on the new a Sony a7S III. It's a camera I've been looking forward to ever since the Sony a7 III came out. I held out on buying that so I could buy the S version. It just took a really long time to get the S version out and it did not disappoint. I do have the new card type for it. I, the thing is, I don't have the SD card or the, the card reader for that. I actually shot on a fairly fast, but not nearly fast enough um, card. It's just a V30, which you really need V90s to be able to get into this. Um, but the 30 was able to keep up with 4K 60 frames and 10 bits. So and those are just the SD cards I was using on my other Sony's, the A65 series. So if you have smaller or slower normal SD cards you've been using, you can't use the full capacity of this camera, but you can still get away with 4K 60, which in, in itself is great. I was not able to film at 120 frames, unfortunately, but as someone I know has mentioned, it's, it's a lot to be filming with 120 frames uh, 4K for a wedding, and they recommended to go with 60, so I'm, I'm not complaining. I do everything off of a laptop, so I'm also uh, working with a proxy workflow to help with the lag in post-production. At 4K 60, I was able to film uh, the, the whole wedding day on one 128 card, which is good because all my other cards were in other cameras. I had like four cameras running, so I didn't really have, I had one other backup 64 gigabyte card if I really needed um, the extra space, but I'm glad I was able to get it all on one card. And uh, it was a bit of a shorter wedding, so I, I will definitely be investing in some more cards, especially when I start getting into those higher frame rates. Um, really gonna need the extra space then. So let's talk about the low light capabilities. They are insane. I was not disappointed. I didn't even have to worry about my ISO. I just kept my settings how I wanted it and then I would just go out in a dark room or outside at night and I would just crank up my ISO until the image was exposed properly and it just came out clean. I didn't even have to worry about it. I didn't have to think about it. That was so nice. Although, as Who's Matt Johnson has pointed out, there is seems to be a dual ISO. So if you're shooting at 10,000, you're going to have a lot grainier image than if you stepped up to 12,000 ISO. So keep that in mind. If you're teetering there, best to kick it up just a little bit more and then it like resets the, uh, the grain in the image. So after taking a look at the wedding footage I have, it's, um, it's fantastic. It's amazing. Color grading is having that flexibility of 10 bit color is so nice. I can push my image and it doesn't fall apart. Um, that's a, a problem I generally have when I'm uh, working with my older footage. If I push that color too hard, that color grade, or uh, trying to white balance and post for something that was drastically white balanced 
incorrectly, it just, it looks bad, it falls apart. This holds together so much better. Image is so much cleaner. And the usability was just, of the actual camera itself was amazing. I still have to go through and set up my presets, but um, the, the new menu system is, I was a little bit worried because I got used to the old Sony menu system, but I was able to find everything just that fast. It was really intuitive, really easy. And if you're coming from any other camera line, and even if you are just used to the Sony camera menu system, you'll find everything you need really quickly. And le I mean, after two, two, three years of using Sony's, I still didn't know where half the settings were. I knew generally where to find it, but I could not point out, oh, go under here, here, here. I, I, would, I would have to do it by muscle memory. And that's, after two years, that's not good. So it is much more intuitive menu system. I am happy with the upgrade. I was worried about adjusting. It didn't take me long. I jumped right into this wedding and was able to find all the settings I need for shooting. And I'm finally shooting in log. I never felt the previous Sony cameras log was good enough. It just, I would have to push the 8-bit too far and um, most of the times to restore that image and it, I just wasn't really all that excited about. Plus the, um, the ISO being um, the native ISO for the old ones um, were like 800 and this can go down to like 160 in log which is amazing i guess this is getting a little technical um if you're not savvy with the specs um sorry if you do understand these specs and you know what the previous cameras were like you'll really love being able to have this 10-bit low iso log footage and um, I can crank the ISO really high up in low light situations and still overexpose my log image to get it, you know, color corrected correctly. Because if you do expose your log as you would a normal color profile, you're going to notice a lot of grain in your shadows. So don't do that if you didn't know that already. But yeah, so really you can push the image and uh, I, uh, our wedding, you know, with how, how quickly it gets dark, some a lot of the footage we had to capture was after sunset in a park um, so it was dark and only lit by little like Christmas tree lights around on trees and that was enough for me to get a clean not noisy image in a log format and uh, yeah, here's the results It looks good, at least to me. I think it looks great. Uh, not having a 30 minute cap on the recording was a breath of fresh air. When I'm filming wedding ceremonies and I've got just me and three cameras and trying to make sure if a ceremony that's going over 30 minutes and stopping and starting all the cameras and Coordinating all that is a lot of work and a lot to think about. Um, so just knowing that I have at least one camera that can just stay rolling and I don't have to even worry about it or think about it was a lifesaver, a godsend. Uh, and then also with the, the battery life, I'm coming from those puny little uh, tiny batteries that this A6500 uses, not the ones that the A7 or A7S3 use. Um, so that extra battery life combined with the record time and no overheating issues was just amazing. It was, I just could film and not have to worry about any of those things that I used to always have to worry about and balance. So that, yeah, if you're coming from uh, that, kind of if you're coming from the same background as me you are going to love that so this has been my overall first impressions of the sony a7s3 it's a phenomenal camera um i am very happy with the upgrade it is 
very pricey. Um, and if you're thinking about getting a camera, especially if you're trying to get your first camera, I wouldn't recommend going this high. I did my first two, three years of my career on a camera that was a third of this cost. And it really adds to the ease of usability um, and flexibility in post. But to be honest, you can get very similar looking results on either camera if you know what you're doing. So if you're trying to get your first camera, getting the most specced out best camera isn't gonna give you the most amazing image. It's all about learning how to use the camera. So start with something affordable and get used to how to use that. And I would recommend spending that money on uh, the money that you would save, budget, budget that for lights, for audio. There's so many other factors into filmmaking than just the camera. Camera isn't enough. Save the extra dollars, buy everything else that you need, and get used to the camera, get used to the settings, figure out how to nail that image, and then discover what you really want out of a camera and where you're like, ah, oh, man, this is awful. I, or I can live with this. You just don't know until you try it out. So try it out affordably, then upgrade once you actually understand and know what kind of things you need in a camera. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. I hope this helps you if you out, if you are considering upgrading or getting the Sony A7S III. I don't know why I'm having a hard time saying it. It's like a tongue twister right now. Normally not, but right now it is. Of course, when I'm on camera. If you haven't, uh, like, subscribe, share this video with people who might be interested in it. Uh, help me grow this channel. I wanna continue providing value and giving you guys great uh, tips, tricks, and uh, um, advice for getting into filmmaking. All right, take care.